Hi, hello. Here a little um, answer, or uh, elaborate answer probably, to a question from Christian. Uh, Christian has a, uh, a good amateur meter. Uh, he's got a TF2 Gauss meter, which is a multi-field meter, which is very popular and uh, I quite like as, a, uh, as an amateur meter. I think it's real good quality, triple axis on magnetic field, so you can assess houses and um, local distribution lines running through your street, wiring for magnetic field problems, all that sort of stuff. And it also has radio frequency radiation measurements. Now, it's in relation to the radio frequency radiation, and Christian had some questions. He was saying that when he walks away from a cell phone tower, um, or he's done an example with a cell phone tower, that sometimes the level can be at 0 0.200 or 0 0.2. Um, and that, you know, that that was considered a safe level. And um, that even when he walks further away, uh, the cell phones still work very well at, you know, sort of lower levels than that. So how does that all work? Okay, so I've got to burst a couple of bubbles. First of all, um, in regards to the reading you're taking, the thing to realize is that you're measuring the air. So you're measuring the basically the output of the transmitters. Um, us professionals, we don't measure the air. Some do, but um, the uh, philosophies that I teach in my courses, um, we see more logic in assessing the body because your body's a much bigger antenna. So if you can measure the body, it gives a far better indication to see if the body's under stress compared with measuring the air. Uh, but that sort of equipment is a lot, lot more expensive. So most meters out there measure the air. So it does give you a good inkling. So in the philosophy of measuring the air, anything between 0 0.1 and 10 microwatts is considered slight concern. Now, in case of Christian's meter, which measures in milliwatts per square meter, that figure is a thousand times smaller than the numbers in microwatts. Microwatts are a thousand times smaller. So 0 0.2 on this particular meter, or another meter that measures in milliwatts per square meter, 0 0.2 would mean 200 microwatts. And so a lot of research in relation to the health effects of radiation speak about microwatts, not necessarily milliwatts. So you should be familiar with how you can convert one to the other. If your meter measures milliwatts, then basically you have to multiply the figure by a thousand to convert it into microwatts. So Christian's 0 0.2 milliwatts is equal to 200 microwatts. So, what I said before, 0 0.1 to 10 microwatts per square meter. In our industry, right, governments, things up to, I think, 10 million microwatts. You're perfectly safe, don't worry about it. Um, but in our industry, in our health-focused, um, you know, healthy home industry, uh, 0 0.1, if we're measuring the air, if we can't measure the body, 0 0.1 to 10 microwatts per meter square is considered slight concern. 10 microwatts to a thousand microwatts is severe concern and over a thousand microwatts is extreme concern. So relating that back again to milliwatts, if you have 1.0, let's say on a meter that measures milliwatts, that or over would be already extreme exposure in our way of thinking. If you get 0 0.2, like Christian had, that's 200 microwatts, so that is severe exposure. So what does that mean? Um, the philosophy behind measuring the air and those words extreme, severe and slight is the following. So if, you're, um, if you find yourself in extreme exposure, you should remove yourself from that situation promptly. If you find yourself in severe exposure, the, the middle range, then the philosophy is that if you're sensitive to radiation, 
then you should remove yourself from that you, from that situation immediately, as with the higher category for everyone. But if you're not sensitive to radiation, then you should remove yourself from that situation at some time in the future, as in there's less urgency than, can you feel that? And so if you're in slight concern, if you are sensitive to radiation, then you should remove yourself from that situation at some time point in the future. And if you're not sensitive to radiation, then there would be, again, less urgency. Now, if you measure, if you assess the body in contrast to an air measurement, you're likely to be warned about more radiation more quickly because your body is a massive antenna. Um, we all know that, or certainly older generations know this, right? When we have the, the old TV and we had the, the bunny ear antenna sitting on the top. Uh, if the picture went bad, you'd send somebody over to adjust the bunny ears. And as long as they kept holding on to that antenna, you had a wonderful picture, right? And then you thought, yeah, yeah, that's the right angle. And then you let go and the picture would be bad again. And then we'd all laugh and we'd say, stay there, keep holding on to it, right? Because your body is a massive antenna. So if you measure in an instrument on a little antenna, you get a certain reading. But if we assess what the body does, it might get a very different indication. So even at very low air measuring levels, the assessment of the body may show something quite different. And that's why a lot of professionals use that to ascertain whether or not the body's under stress. In terms of why a cell phone will still work um, when you get low, low air levels of radio frequency radiation, um, that's because cell phones will actually work at a very, very, very low signal strength. I could be misquoting a little bit, but I won't be too far off. I think it is 0 0.000, maybe another zero, and then two microwatts per meter square, not milliwatts, microwatts. That's why it's so ironic that we're being exposed to so much of this radiation. But of course, it's all economics, isn't it? It is much cheaper to put up several towers that are more powerful than to put purposely up more antennas that are very weak. It's a lot more costly. Uh, we want to do less towers, more powerful, less work, right? Um, so these exposure standards were set a long time ago. Some countries don't even have exposure standards. Uh, but they were set a long, long time ago, and they basically looked at thermal properties. Um, you always hear the argument that uh, non-ionizing radiation is harmless because it cannot knock off an electron. That's, of course, ridiculous because there's so much going on in your body, regardless of an electron being pushed off or not. Um, so anyway, and there's, goodness, 20,000 plus peer-reviewed research studies that have indicated, that have researched this area, all looking at different parts of, you know, how a cell responds, how the body responds, um, you know, research amongst the population, as in we have more cell phone towers on this side of town, we have more cell phone towers on that side of town, where do we have more cancers? Well, guess what, on that side of town. Um, and so there's so much research and the majority of those studies indicate harm. And so it doesn't take uh, rocket science, it doesn't take any person, any doctor could figure this out, um, that this exposure standards are way, way too high. Um, it's interesting to note that the World Health Organization has um, classified radio frequency radiation, which is your Wi-Fi, and which is your cell phone radiation and it's a cell phone tower radiation, your smart meter radiation, your baby monitor radiation, your Bluetooth devices radiation, your game computer radiation, your wireless mouse radiation, all that stuff, everything that works wireless, um, that's classified as a possible carcinogen, class 2b. Uh, now the same category in the World Health Organization, in that same category you find exhaust fumes. Now, would you put your child in any room that's got exhaust fumes in it? No, you'd leave the house, you'd open the windows and you go for a walk, <laughs> right? You don't want that smell in there. Regardless of how thick it is, if there smells there, <laughs> that child's not sleeping here, right? But why is the Wi-Fi left on? World Health Organization doesn't see much difference. And there's enough 
there is enough studies, doctors argue, that it shouldn't be a class 2B. It should be a class 1 carcinogen. Um, so anyway, I hope this um, gives you a little bit of insight. Uh, also for you, Christian, and everybody else, I thought I'd do it in a little video so a lot more people can benefit from this answer. So it's great you have an amateur meter. And I mean, there's several good ones. Uh, I've always been a favorite of the tri-field meters and the TF2s are great. And you know, we have those available as well. Um, and you, if you buy an EMF meter, you got to spend a little bit of money. I mean, you're going to make some serious decisions on it, potentially. Uh, I think it should measure magnetic fields in three axes, ideally. So you can measure around the house or potential property per purchase properly. Um, but you got to also realize that it's not professional equipment, right? If a professional walks in, they're walking in with about $5,000 worth of equipment, easy. Um, so it's going to have its shortcomings. And so one of the shortcomings might be that the lowest it can indicate is already a sort of a problem area if we were to assess the body. Um, so don't get a false sense of security assuming that it is a low number on the meter that that does not necessarily that doesn't necessarily mean that that's not a problem it might already be a problem we might already want to fix your bedroom with that exposure most bedrooms are terrible um, so anyway I hope this gives you some answers and um, yeah there's uh, more um, answers on my uh, website healthstronghold.com and of course, I've got a podcast channel with the same name. You can look at that as well for a lot more information. Um, you can follow my Facebook page, Patrick Lenderberg. My profile is getting a bit too full, so I'm going to shift my postings to my page. Um, and um, yeah, anyway, lots of uh, lots of information about. All right, hope this helped. Thanks.